Exploration is absolutely my favourite thing to do in EVE Online, whether I'm just flying around looking at systems like Old Man Star or the Eternal Flame in Pater, the Cartier Sai Monument in Saisio, or Gita 44 for its unusual undock. I love just exploring the game and seeing what this massive universe has to offer. If I find something interesting en route, like a relic or data site to hack, then so much the better, but for the most part it's just the art of exploring, wandering, and finding all these new exciting things. Now a lot of people ask me what is the best ship for exploration, and so I'm going to try and answer that to the best of my ability in this video, to give you the very best options for the ships that you want to use for the content you want to create. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie, and by the end of this video, hopefully I'll have answered the question, which exploration vessel is best for you? Now I've already put out a video talking about the Cheetah, I will put a link in the description to this video to that one, and if for some reason I put these out in a different order, that link might not work at the time that you watch this video, but we'll see how that all goes. Essentially the Cheetah is my favourite for a number of reasons, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best for you. There are of course a multitude of different categories that we're going to be looking through here. When we talk about exploration in terms of gameplay though, for most people that's the whole concept of probing down sites and then hacking into the containers whether those are relic or data sites although we will talk about some of the other features of exploration vessels as we go through we're going to be looking at the tier one exploration vessels that is to say the probe the heron the magnate and the imicus we'll have a look at their navy issue variants we'll have a look at the tech two variants the cheetah the buzzard the helios and the anathema and we'll also be taking a look at the astero and passive fire because yeah those do kind of qualify as well we might also tangent into some of the other vessels that i do occasionally use for this kind of content as well but again more on that later if you do enjoy this video please let me know hit like on it subscribe to the channel for more eve online content if you haven't already and if you do want to go the extra mile to help keeping me make content like this you can do so either via my paypal tip jar or my patreon which you can pledge to support out monthly i even have a red bubble merchandise store including exclusive exclusive merchandise about the very ship you're seeing on screen now, the Lucid Echo. All of that said and done though, let's jump straight in. The majority of this video is going to be inside the ship tree, so we're not going to have much in the way of flashy graphics or things going on on screen, so if you do want to treat this like a podcast while you do the washing up or have tea and biscuits or whatever it is you do, you do you. It's There's nothing you're going to be missing out on on screen particularly. Now to start off with then, let's talk about the Tech 1 Exploration Frigates. These are open to alpha players, they are readily available early on, to the point that if you've done the career agent missions in your starting area, you probably have access to at least one of these already. All four of the main empires have them. For the Min Matar Republic, that is the Probe. For the Galente Federation, that is the Imicus. For the Kaldari State, that's the Heron. And if you accidentally rolled the Amar Empire, don't worry, it happens to some people, that's going to be the Magnate. Now, what is the main difference between those ships? Well, first of all, let's talk about what's exactly the same about them, and that is their skill bonuses. If we look at the probe here, then Minmatar Frigate will give you bonuses, but if you're looking at, say, the Imacus, this will be Galente Frigate, the uh, Heron will have Kaldari Frigate, and of course the Magnate will have a Marion Frigate as well as its bonus. They are all exactly the same. They give you a 7.5% bonus to Core and Combat Scanner Probe Strength, and a 5% reduction in Salvager Duration. Now, this essentially means that if you train this all the way to level 5, you're going to be looking at a 37.5% increase to Core and Combat Scanner Probe Strength, which means these ships are going to give you better probing strength. It allows you to, like, it, it helps complete a site to 100% that little bit faster. It saves time having to sort of start at 8 AU, then drop to 4, then 2, then 1, and so on, and keep zeroing in on everything. It means those sensors are able to better locate sites as you're looking for them, or ships in the case of combat scanner probes. The 5% reduction or 25% reduction at full training in salvage duration, uh, just again, if you're going to go out salvaging stuff, you can scan down stuff with a probe. If you find a the site that someone has abandoned, you can go in in a probe and start salvaging. I do honestly think that if you're going salvaging, you'll probably get better going in something like a thrasher, just because you can fit more salvages and just do it a little bit faster. 
To each their own though, everyone has different ways of doing it. If you are using the probe or the heron or whatever for that, then it does have that bonus. They also all have a roll bonus of five bonus points to relic and re uh, data analyzer virus strength. Now I've done a video on hacking and archeology span already that explains exactly what that works, but it basically means that your hackers and uh, your data analyzers and relic analyzers have an additional strength of five. So they do five more damage to everything you click on, which is going to help you complete that the little bit faster. Now I say all of the empires have these exact bonuses. If we go across to the Heron, for example, and have a look, you can see that same 7.5% bonus to core and combat scanner probe strength, 5% reduction in salvage duration, and the five point bonus to relic and data analyzer virus strength. Same for the Imacus, if we just have a quick look at that one there to kind of prove it here. The ugliest ship in EVE, or at least one of them. Same stats there, but from Galente Frigate. And again, if we go into the Amar Empire and have a look at the Magnate, same bonuses, but from Amar Frigate. Ultimately, all four of these are absolutely great starting points for going exploring. And in fact, even I will still undock my probe. I have all four Empire Frigate skills all the way up to level five. You can kind of see here, if we look at the Interceptor, I even have a Mar Frigate trained to five. That's how serious I am about flying frigates. But ultimately, I tend to use the probe more than any of the others. Why is that? simply because I like the look of it. It honestly is the only reason that I use that one most. They do all have their own advantages and disadvantages caused by the differences in their fitting structure. So for example, if we were to open up the probe here and have a look at its fitting, you can see that this ship has three high power slots, which they will all have. That's enough to put a basic cloak on there if you are a mega and capable of using cloaks. You can also fit your probe scanner on there. You can then fit something like a salvager or whatever the hell you fancy in that third utility slot. Really, you only need two, but the third one, it's kind of up to you what you do with it. Now, with the probe, we've got four mid slots and three low slots. Now, this gives us some slight differences in fitting. If we were to compare this instead to, say, the Heron, come in and have a look at this one, show info, the Heron instead has five medium power slots, but only two low slots. Finally then, for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to talk too much about the Imacus here because it's kind of in the middle again. If we look at the Magnate, you can see this only has three medium slots, but it's got four low slots. So you get a decent spread of how these all work. And what does that actually mean? Why do we care about those as explorers, right? Essentially, it's because the mid slots, two of them at basic level at least, are going to be filled with probably a data analyzer and a relic analyzer. Now, you might decide that you want to use an integrated analyzer to only take up one slot, but if we're being completely honest, those are very expensive and they turn what is a cheap exploration ship into an incredibly expensive loss if you happen to lose it. Ultimately then, you look at something like the Magnate and you've only got one spare mid slot to go with. Do you want to put propulsion in there? Do you want to put a cargo scanner in there? Or do you want to put something like a pinpointing array or a range finding array in order to make it a little bit easier to scan some of these sites down? This is honestly why I like the Magnate least of all for scanning. It does have the advantage that the four low slots give it a lot of opportunity to fit things like nanofibers or uh, inertial stabilizers to get you faster um, align time so that you can warp away quickly if something arrives, but ultimately three mid slots just doesn't feel like enough. If we come back to the probe though, and again have a look at the show info there, We've still got three low power slots, which are gonna help us reach some good align times, but we've now got four medium power slots. That means we've essentially got two slots left open that we can play with after a data analyzer and a relic analyzer. That gives us the opportunity to add, say, a micro warp drive and a cargo scanner, or a micro warp drive, a micro warp drive and a range finding array, or a pinpointing array, or something like that. It just gives us that little bit more power in there. Now this does mean that theoretically the Kaldari State's uh, Heron here 
does have a kind of nice advantage for newer players because those five medium power slots are going to help you have two slots used for the relic and data analyzer you're then going to fit a propulsion in the uh, third slot leaving you with two slots left for cargo scanners pinpointing arrays range finding arrays that kind of thing there so you can kind of use the heron as a way of making up for the fact that your skills probably aren't quite as good early on when you start to use these ships that fifth mid slot there means that you can use the range finding array or pinpointing array to get yourself a little bit faster scan times or less scan deviation or higher scan strength. Ultimately, once you understand how probe scanning works, you can kind of get around having lower stats, but whilst they train up and whilst you're learning how to do it, the Heron is arguably the best. The two low slots, however, does mean that it is gonna have the slowest align time, most likely at least, out of the uh, four main Empire frigates. Essentially, that's just something you kind of have to li live with. It's, it's the nature of EVE, that whenever there is a pro, there is a con, there is always a yang to your yin, there is always something to keep it balanced. And with the Heron, that's the point, uh, point you're looking at there, that you're gonna have slower align time, which means you do need to just be a little bit more aware of your situation if you are in riskier areas of space. Worth bearing in mind. And ultimately, that is why I like the probe. For me, the probe sitting there with four mid slots and three low power slots means I can get some decent align times with those lows, but I've still got enough mid slots to fit the ship to whatever it is I fancy doing with it. You might decide though that you really like the Magnate being able just to give you super fast align times and you don't mind the fact that essentially it means you can just fit a relic analyzer, a data analyzer and then a propulsion. You don't mind that you don't have a cargo scanner because you're going to open everything anyway and you don't mind the fact that you don't have the range finding or pinpointing arrays or whatever because you don't feel that you need those. That's going to be a personal choice and honestly you can probably get around most of those decisions. If you just want to go for one because it looks best to you, absolutely go for that. That it, it, it genuinely, the enjoyment of flying a ship that you like is always going to be better than trying to chase the theoretical best. You just have to learn to work with what you have. So after the Tech 1 frigates, we now have Navy Issue Exploration Frigates. These are a fairly recent addition to EVE Online. That is the Probe Fleet Issue for the Minmatar Republic, the Amar Empire gets the Magnate Navy Issue, the Kaldari State gets the Heron Navy Issue, and the Galante Federation gets the Imacus Navy Issue. And we're not actually going to spend too much time talking about these because there's not much difference here. You kind of get the same mid slots, the same low slots, usually an extra high slot in there with the ability to fit a bit more weaponry if that's what you fancy. But if we have a look at their traits, you'll see the main difference here. So again, we have for Minmatar Frigate, just like the probe, a 7.5% increase to core and combat scanner probe strength. So as far as that goes, the probe fleet issue and the probe are exactly the same. They also have the same five point bonus to relic and data analyzer virus strength. So for basic exploration, the probe fleet issue and the probe are exactly the same other than the fact that the probe fleet issue is a bit more expensive and theoretically has an extra high slot, but chances are you're not gonna be using it if you're just going basic exploration. So what's the additional high slot there for? Well, if we have a look at the uh, the bonuses again, we can see a 12.5% bonus to light missile and rocket rate of fire. This means that the probe fleet issue has a bit of combat bite to it. It's really not much though, and by the time you fit a core probe on there, I mean if we look at the fitting again, we can see we've only got two launcher hardpoints. By the time you've put a core probe launcher on there, you've only got one launcher slot left. Like, what do you do with one missile launcher? The answer is not much. That's not enough to handle the rats that would appear in a ghost site. It's not enough to scare away someone who comes in. If you're jumped by an Astero in a Relic or Data site, and you decide that because you're in a probe fleet issue with a single rocket launcher, that you're gonna stick around and take that fight, you deserve the lost mail that's coming your way in a few seconds, because this is not a ship that can take that. The other point that we do get here is a 99% reduction in scan probe launcher CPU requirement, which does make it significantly easier for one of these to fit an expanded probe launcher. This is very useful if you want to be able to go just combat, uh, sorry, go standard scanning for relic and data sites, and maybe swap to some combat scanner probes to like work for a fleet. 
that's a genuine use for this, that you can scan down things for your fleet mates, find them a little bit faster in a nice, cheap ship. But it's a pretty niche use, if I'm being completely honest. I did take a look at, for example, the Kaldari Navy Heron, um, because I really like the ship design of the Heron. But again, it just doesn't stand out as having enough of a use for me for exploration. I'm not saying these ships are useless, by a long means they are not. They have specific uses, but the purpose of this video is which is the best ship for you for exploring. And considering again we've still got that same layout of 5 mids and 2 lows, exactly the same as we would have on the standard Heron, that additional high power slot just doesn't do much for us as an explorer as a dedicated combat vessel that's going to go around scanning, then yeah, maybe there's stuff that you can do there, and maybe I'm missing something huge with these. Let me know in the comment section if you think I've just missed something here. But for the most part, if you're just into exploring and wandering around the universe, seeing what there is and occasionally running a relic or data site, you're probably going to skip the Navy issue explorers, and instead you're going to be looking at things like the Covert Ops Tier 2 explorers. Now here is where I am very biased. Of course, for the Mimitar Republic we have the Cheetah, for the Galente Federation this is the Helios, for the Kaldari State this is the Buzzard, and for the Amar Empire that is the Anathema. Now again, if we have a look at the show info page on these, we get some very different trade descriptions. Now to compare this to the probe directly. The first thing we need to look at then is Mimitar Frigate Bonuses. This is the same skill we're probably going to already have, and you can see it has completely changed everything. The bonus to Core and Combat Scanner Probe Strength is now in Covert Ops. So if you haven't trained the Covert Ops skill particularly high, you are actually going to drop Core Combat Scanner Probe Strength in doing so, because you're getting a bonus from the, uh, from the probe that you're suddenly not getting from the Cheetah because you haven't trained up the Covert Ops skill high enough. Basically, if you were to look at the fact that the probe has that 10%, oh, no, I'm looking at the burst there and reading the wrong numbers completely, let's come out of the way there to the probe, you've got that 7.5% bonus to Core and Combat Scanner Probe Strength. Yes, it's a 10% on the Cheetah, but if, for example, you've only got one tier of Covert Ops, that's just a 10% bonus, whereas if you're sitting at Minmatar Frigate 5, that's a 37.5% bonus. Therefore, it's not worth upgrading to the Covert Ops Frigates until you at least have the Covert Ops skill to level 4. At that point, because at level 3, you've got a 30% bonus to Core and Combat Scanner Probe Strength. At level 4, it's a 40% bonus. It's only once you have ticked off level 4 of Covert Ops that you suddenly have the actual upgrade from the probe to the cheetah going from 37.5% bonus to 40% bonus and even then it's still fairly minor. I would only really bother going up to the tier 2s once you're training to all the way to level 5. At level 5 that's when this suddenly becomes more useful for scanning stuff down. But that's not the full story there either. Yeah I know this is getting confusing right? One of the main reasons that people upgrade from a probe to a cheetah is for the ability to use Covert Ops cloaking devices. And again, training into the Covert Ops skill reduces their CPU requirement, which makes them easier to fit to your ship. You can see that down here we have the ability to fit the Covert Ops cloaking device. This is a cloaking device that allows us to warp whilst we are cloaked. may not sound like a huge difference over the standard cloak, but it means you can warp into an anomaly cloaked. No one knows that you've arrived which means if there's a ship waiting for you, they don't know you're there. And it's only once you're in a position where you can theoretically jackrabbit away at a moment's notice, once you are comfortable with the position, you can then decloak. See if they decloak to try and grab you, and then warp away nice and safely. It means when you're moving in Nullsec or Wormhole Space, for example, you can also not worry too much about gate camps, because you can land on the bubbles cloaked and just navigate through. Obviously you need to be careful not to lose to a car lose your cloak to a cargo container or something, but even then, the ability to fit interdiction nun nullifiers to these ships is really useful as well, because that allows you to just click a button and warp out of an interdiction sphere. Very, very useful. And that doesn't say that on here, that's listed instead on the interdiction nullifier, which ships can fit it. 
But that is an absolute godsend at times, to land into a gate camp, have your cloak dropped, and then just hit the interdiction nullifier and warp away like, nope, not dealing with that today, and you've cost them a kill. They're sitting there going, oh, juicy, and you're just long gone. We do also upgrade from a 5-point bonus to Relic and Data Analyzer Virus Strength to a 10-point Relic and Data Analyzer Strength bonus. We also get reductions to the Survey Probe Scan Time, 50% at full training, much faster scanning. Helps you lock down those sites a little bit faster, lock down enemy ships a little bit faster if you're going for the Combat Scanner, stuff like that. It's There's a lot of really cool stuff to say about these. But are they a direct upgrade? The answer there also is no. And there are a couple of reasons for this. Again, if we go into the attributes this time around, here on the cheetah, you can see we have a capacity of 200 cubic meters. But if I were to open up the probes info page, you'll see that this goes all the way up to 400 cubic meters. It's got double the cargo on the basic probe than the cheetah. Again, not necessarily a huge issue. If you're going to be going into a relic or data site like one or two at a time and then coming straight home, the cheetah is going to do that great for you. But if you want to be going on longer journeys and grabbing a whole load of stuff before returning, the probe has the cargo capacity that the cheetah just doesn't. And if you want to use one of these as a cheap hauler to get stuff moved from A to B, again the probe allows you to carry more than the cheetah does. So there is that genuinely to consider there. There's also just flat out the cost. Losing a fitted probe might be 6 to 10 million isk worth of ship. Losing a cheetah? you're looking closer to 60 million isk, maybe up to 100 million depending on what kind of fitting you've used for it. It's a ship that is 10 times the cost, and if you're not overly confident in learning how to jackrabbit away from a threat or landing on gate camps and handling all of that, then the probe is a much cheaper loss whilst you're learning. So it's not a simple case of just, oh, I've got the skills now, I've trained into everything for the probe, let's just use the cheetah and I'll never fly a probe again. If I'm going high sec exploring, I absolutely use the probe, because anything that ganks me there is going to be a cheap ship, and thus I just want to lose something cheap as well. But a bigger cargo hold means I can go on longer run times. If I need that covert ops uh, capability, however, say I'm going through wormholes or dangerous null sec, then yeah, the cheetah does kind of pull ahead for that. And it also is better at getting those harder sites, the central and the ruined sites, for example, because you've got that bonus to your relic and data analyzer virus strength. It's an additional five points and it may only sound like five points, but it really does make a difference. It is also worth noting as well, if we have a look in the attributes again of these, if I go to the fitting here on the cheetah, that this only has two rig slots. Whereas if I go down to the probe and open this one back up, this on the other hand, that's completely the wrong menu, I'm clicking the wrong things here, this has three small rig slots. So you can fit more rigs to kind of make up for things as well. It's minor, but it's worth mentioning. And this is kind of true for all of the others as well. I do use the Buzzard quite frequently. I think the Buzzard makes an excellent combat scanner because the drop to its deviation really helps to, you know, just get things in there a little bit faster. There are some other ships around, like obviously the Magnate and the Helios as well, that have their own different uh, abilities that you can use on them here that are going to change up how you fly these ships and what kind of things you do with them. So it is up to you kind of when you want to upgrade from a Tech 1 to a Tech 10 exploration boat. I, again, don't really recommend going for like the Navy issue versions. I just don't see there's much need as an explorer to be using these just yet. But then what about the other ships I mentioned? The big one that everyone asks about is the Sisters of Eve Astero. Now this is absolutely one of my favorite looking ships in the game. It's a stunning vessel. And it's got some really cool bonuses to it. Now here it's notable you're going to have to train into both Galente and Amar for a get bonus to get the bonuses for this. It gets bonuses from both empires, whereas the probe is obviously Minmatar, the, uh, the the Magnate is obviously uh, Amar, and the uh, the Imacus is obviously Galente. Here you kind of need to have trained into both the Imacus and the Magnate to get the full bonuses. But what do they do? Well, if you're training into Galente Frigate, a 20% bonus to drone hit points, so your drones can take a bit more damage before you pull them back. The Amar Frigate bonus is a 4% bonus to all armor resistances, so by training Amar Frigate, you can reduce the incoming damage you take, that kind of thing. So already we're kind of seeing these are combat skills, right? 
For exploration, is this going to be worth it? And some people will give the answer that yes it is, because you can warp into a site that someone else is already hacking with, say, a probe or a imacus, and you can launch your drones and be quite scary to them. What I would say is most of those people are just going to run away anyway, so you're not going to suddenly get killed. But yeah, okay, you've now hijacked their relic site or their data site or whatever. And we do have bonuses to that as well. We've got a 100% reduction in cloaking device CPU requirement. We've got the ability to fit covert ops cloaking devices, just like the Cheetah, the Buzzard, the Anathema, and the Helios. And we've also got that 10 point bonus to relic and data analyzer virus strength. We even here have a 37.5% bonus to core and combat scanner probe strength. That's on par with the basic tier one explorers. You're not gonna suddenly get more probe strength from using an Astero instead of using a Tech 2, because those can go all the way up to 50%, but still 37.5% as a flat bonus is pretty nice. It's on par with the Probe, the Magnate, the Heron, and the Imacus. The thing with the Astero is, again, looking at its fittings. So we've got four medium slots, which is pretty cool. It's on par with the, uh, with, with the Probe there. And we've got four low slots as well, which makes it also on par with the Magnate. So we kind of got the best of both worlds. Not quite as many mid slots as the Heron, but a really nice balance of slots there for exploration, right? You can get your Relic and Data Analyzer in there. You can get a Propulsion Unit in there. And then you've still got a fourth medium slot to fit whatever the heck you fancy. And for the low slots, you can quite easily play around with the Align Time by fitting Nanofibers or Inertial Stabilizers, things like that. You can also maybe get a damage control or something in there, or some armor resistance buffs as well to really work into that. And if we go into the attributes page, we've also got a pretty good drone capacity. We can carry there 75 cubic meters worth of drones. These are gonna be light drones for the most part, I would assume, because that's kind of what we're looking at here. It can launch theoretically one heavy drone or two mediums, but for the most part, you're gonna be using light drones, launching a full flight of five light drones out of that drone bay and you can carry there 15 drones. So you've always got options. You can flip between different types of drones for different situations. This kind of makes the Astero more of a hunter than an explorer though, for one key reason. In the fittings, we have two high power slots. One of those is gonna be your probe launcher, probably an expanded probe launcher because you want to be able to use both combat and core. And then because it's a cloaky little ship, the second one is now immediately your covert ops cloak. Now the advantage of flying a tier two covert ops frigate is that you've still got the three high slots. The third one giving you the ability to fit an interdiction nullifier. You accidentally warp onto a gate camp right next to a cargo container that decloaks you and you have to run out of that bubble in order to like get that last little bit there to get that distance to warp away, you can lose your ship in those seconds. Someone micro warp drives towards you, overheated micro warp drive, gets into range, scrams you, you're not warping away. It's as simple as that. I can still get away from that in my Cheetah. I can't get away from that in my Astero and the Astero is much more expensive than even the Cheetah, the Buzzard, the Anathema and the Helios. It's an expensive ship, and it kind of loses some of its core exploration functionality in return for that ability to use drones. Now again, if you're not going somewhere where you think gate camps are a problem, if you're flying low sec exclusively, for example, those drones can help you bully someone out of a combat out of, out of a relic or data site. I'll be honest though, when it comes to using an Astero, you kind of want to fit it either for PvP hunting or you want to fit it for Relic and Data Analyzing. Because if you try to split between the two, you just end up with a ship that's not quite good enough for either. If you want to be running the Relic and Data sites, you're better off using a Tier 2 Exploration Frigate and having those bigger bonuses to scan strength and just the ability to run away if something like an Astero jumps in on you. If you want to go as a combat vessel, it's better to fit that Astero and just forget that Relic and Data Analyzers are a thing. You build the ship for combat. You scan someone down with the probes or you get lucky and you jump into a site that someone else is in and you get some kills from them. Now, if you kind of try to do both, you just end up with a ship that doesn't really excel at either. And that really can be a problem, especially with the cost of an Astero comparative. 
Now, it is worth at this point having a look at one more that I don't think exists on the ship tree. No, it doesn't, because that's Edencom. I keep forgetting that that's Edencom. And that is the Pacifier. It's weird that the Concord ships don't have their own ship tree bar uh, branch, but there we go. We can still come in and have a look at the Pacifier here. Now, again, like the Astero, this is one of the coolest looking ships in the game, to the point I'm actually going to open up the window and showcase it with a load of choppy frame rate there for some reason. Don't know why. I love the look of this ship. It is a beautiful looking ship. The trouble is it's also ridiculously expensive and it's quite convoluted if we have a look at its traits. Now for the purposes of exploration we've got a 10% bonus to core and combat scanner probe strength so again 50% bonus at full covert ops training. We've got that 50% reduction survey probe flight time like we have similar to on the uh, tech 2 exploration frigates. We've also got a 10% bonus to warp speed and acceleration which a lot of those frigates have to a certain degree as well. I think it's actually 15% on most of the tech to explorers whereas here it's only 10% but still it's nice to have. If we scroll all the way down to the roll bonuses we get 100% reduction in cloaking devices and the ability to fit covert ops, ops clocks, uh, cloaks again which is really cool and a 10 point bonus to relic and data analyzer so we've pretty much got everything that we wanted from the Tech 2 Explorers already on this vessel, right? We then also have things like this bonus to security status gains from destruction of non capsuleer pirates while flying this ship. Great for ratting and small combat sites to get up your security status if that's what you're aiming for. Armor repair and shield booster effectiveness is increased by a percentage equal to 10 times the pilot security status with a, uh, a floor of 0% and a ceiling of 50%. And that's really cool, it means that your shield boosters and armor repairers are going to be even better on this ship. But when we have a look at the Amar Frigate or Kaldari Frigate etc, you see these are all bonuses to their weapon systems of choice. This is still primarily a combat ship that you kind of use for, you know, scanning down enemies, going in and getting aggressive. If you want to go hunting for relic and data sites in one of these, you can. I mean, we've got the five high slots here. We can absolutely fit the probe launcher, the interdiction nullifier, and the covert ops cloak we'd be looking for. We've got four low slots and four mid slots, which is, as we talked about with the cheetah, a really nice layout. It gives us a lot of versatility and power there. If we look at the attributes, oh no, our capacity is only 150 cubic meters. It's even smaller than the cheetah, Helios, Buzzard, and uh, Anathema. You're going to have to dock up more frequently with that. And okay, two rig slots, same as we saw on the Tech 2s. We've got a good amount of high slots here to fit weaponry, so we can put, say, a probe, uh, probe launcher on there, a covert ops cloak, and then three weapons of either type, or we can lose the cloak and just go for four of each type, or you could keep the cloak and lose the scanner and use this for running combat sites with a full brace of four cannons or four missiles or whatever you want to do. For exploration, though, we don't care about anything more than three high slots. Three high slots gives us our perfect high slot layout. Anything more than that's unnecessary, so we've got two extra high slots here that we're just not going to use. We've got a load of combat bonuses here we're not going to use while exploring, because again, if you fit for exploration and for combat, you're just not as good at either, which means you're going to lose to a ship that is dedicated for combat, that happens to jump in on you. You take one of these that's half and half up against a dedicated hunting Astero, it's dead. And when I say one of these is dead and expensive, we're talking about 300 million isk just for the basic ship, and that was last time I checked and got one for myself. These are incredibly expensive exploration vessels, and in my opinion, really not worth it. The bottom line when it comes to exploring in frigates is that the Tech 1s are actually going to do you really well for a good length of time. There's no shame in running a basic probe. I still today, with full 5 out of 5 hacking skill, uh, scanning skills, every skill in the hacking menu is at 5 out of 5. I still run the probe when I'm in high sec. I only go down to the cheetah when I know I'm going to be going somewhere much more dangerous. That's when I'll use the Lucid Echo and go and undock in that one instead. So those are what I'd recommend. Pick which one you like the look of. Do you like the Probe and the Cheetah? Do you like the Heron and the Buzzard? Do you like the Imacus and the Helios? You're weird if you do. Do you like the Anathema and the Magnate? Which one you like visually is probably going to be more important than which one has the best slot figuration for whatever it is you're doing. You can kind of make up for the lack of slots in just player skill. 
So really it's which one looks best that is going to matter most for you. And when it comes down to it, whether you go for a probe or a cheater, a tech one or a tech two, it comes down to your skills. It's pointless undocking a cheater for exploration until you've got that covert ops all the way up to four, for example. But equally, it, it's personal choice. I don't like making sort of those ugh, clickbait thumb uh, thumbnails and titles where it's like, you know, hey, what's the best ship? The thing is, there really isn't a best ship. It's probably going to be one of the Tech 2 Covert Ops or one of the Tech 1 Explorer Frigates for you for the most part. The Astero is absolutely viable. I know a lot of people who use them for exploration. I know a lot of people use them for hunting. But using them for both, which is what I think a lot of people try to do with them early on, that's not a good idea. That just results in expensive lost mails. Because rather than use those precious seconds to run away, you stop and go, can I take this guy? And that's all the time it takes for them to lock and scram you, and then you discover that no, you can't. It's as simple as that. For me, if I'm flying a cheetah, the answer to the question, can I take this guy, is immediately no, no matter what they are. So the second they warp onto grid, I just warp out. Unless, obviously, it's another explorer. But even then, if it's an explorer like a probe, it's got a drone that can do damage to me. I don't even have that on my cheetah. So I tend to just warp out. The second someone else appears in sight, I don't have to ask myself that question. I don't waste time thinking, can I take him, only to find out no I cannot, and to me that's valuable, as is the fact that this is 60 million isk <clears throat> compared to the Astero being 150 million isk, for example, or the Pacifier being 300 million isk. That matters, because exploration is not necessarily the most lucrative way of making isk in EVE Online. Getting the cost back from your ship can take time. So if you've just spent 300 million isk on a pacifier and then you spend a couple of, like, another 100 million fitting it out, it's going to take you a while before you get that 400 million back. And I honestly think you're probably going to lose the ship before you get it back. Or at least you're going to have to play in such a way that you just don't find fun rather than, you know, risking it and enjoying the game. But that's just me. That's just me. And there are alternative options as well. A few honourable mentions. I tend to go scanning in my strategic cruisers quite a bit. I have an alt that flies a Loki, and he will go scanning in that. I have my main often go out and undock in my Tengu. Now the Tengu, obviously, it has no bonuses across the board here, really, to, like, scanning or to hacking. It doesn't really have those, and it's quite a slow-moving ship, so it takes a bit of time to get between the containers. I usually create a perch and warp in and warp out. And again, there is that issue that if I fit it to be able to do combat and hacking, I kind of lose some of the bit of both. For me though, the ability to map a wormhole with a Tengu, jump into a C3 combat site, run it, come out and go, oh, there's a hacking site, I'm gonna jump into that and run it and then come home as well. Honestly, that is useful to me, and the Tengu can ultimately do that. I have a fit where I use a Zoigma integrated analyzer in the mid slot. I don't have as many bonuses as I would on the Cheetah from things like that 10%, uh, that 10 points of additional um, attack power for the virus. We don't have the bonuses to scanning that we would have on the Cheetah or whatever either. But it can still do it because I'm at full five skills on all the exploration skills. I can still scan down the most difficult sites because I know what I'm doing. I can still hack the most difficult containers because I know what I'm doing. I don't need the skills to prop me up on that one. But arguably, it is better to fit for purpose. And so if you want to do combat, use a combat fitted Tengu. If you want to go scanning, use a hacking fitted Buzzard. Simple as that. Simple as that. Ultimately though, that brings us to the end of this video. The question of which is the best exploration ship for you? The answer is, depends. And it does very much depend. I'm sure you have your personal favorite and I would love, genuinely love to hear in the comments section down below what your favorite exploration ship is and why. And if it's the Pacifier or the Astero, please don't let me say that your ship is not the best for it. It might be for you. For a beginner, for a new player looking into things, it's not arguably the it's arguably not the best. Arguably you can get better results out of other ships fit for a specific purpose. But if you're enjoying flying an Astero or a pacifier that is mixed and you're getting results with that, 
that's awesome. I'm super happy and I would love to hear more about that. Or hell, come join the Catskull Discord and drop me some screenshots as well, because explorers get the best screenshots, hands down. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching this one right the way through to the end. Let me know your thoughts. See you all in the next video. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.